Hi, this is Julian from Minute Earth. In the 1960s, Americans realized they'd inadvertently driven the bald eagle, their own national mascot, to near extinction through a combination of habitat destruction and accidental poisoning. Today, another extinction event is happening under eerily similar conditions, but it's happening on the microscopic level, inside our guts. Microbes evolved to live in our intestines back when our hunter-gatherer diet meant our guts were full of grasses, fruits, and nuts. But today, much like we converted eagles' habitat from prime waterfront hunting grounds to prime waterfront properties, we've traded that paleo diet for a processed diet that lacks the fiber and complex carbs that some microbes evolved to munch. And in another gut-wrenching turn of events, much like we overused the pesticide DDT, which poisoned bald eagles and interfered with their baby making, we've overused antibiotics, which indiscriminately attack our microbiome, poisoning lots of good gut bacteria. When the bald eagles, notorious birds of prey, disappeared, the lack of competition caused the gull population to explode, and in turn, they preyed on smaller endangered birds and spread diseases like salmonella. Similarly, gut bacteria like Prevotella, which break our food down into nutrients that can regulate our immune system, are disappearing from our guts, and in some cases, leaving space for explosions of bacteria like C. diff, which can cause diarrhea and inflammation, and potentially lead to other metabolic diseases like diabetes. The good news is that we were able to bring bald eagles back from the brink. The US government stopped people from destroying bald eagle habitats and building over them. They bred bald eaglets and transported others from parts of the US where their numbers were still strong to reintroduce them to their old soaring grounds. And when we found out DDT was poisoning bald eagles, we limited its use to public health emergencies. So how can we apply all these strategies to saving the micro-eagles of our guts? Well, for starters, we can bring that essential fiber back into our diets, which would make our gut habitat more, well, habitable for those missing microbes. And we can take bacteria like Prevotella, which are common in the hunter-gatherer heads of people of Tanzania, and add them to the guts of people who need them via probiotic pills. And we can curb our use of antibiotics, only using them for crucial medical cases, where they're actually useful and not, you know, for the sniffles. If we take the right measures to protect their habitat, we can ensure our gut bacteria, like bald eagles before them, don't leave an empty nest. This video is sponsored by the University of Minnesota, where students, faculty, and staff across all fields of study are working to solve the grand challenges facing society. One of these challenges is enhancing individual and community capacity for a changing world, which includes researching how the modern changes to our diet have affected our health. Professor Ron Blackman at the College of Biological Sciences and Professor Andres Gomez at the College of Food, Agricultural, and Natural Resource Sciences are studying how these new diets have affected the makeup and evolution of our microbiome, and how those changes are associated with certain diseases. Thanks, University of Minnesota!